first of all, I'm a white woman. I teach in a former Abbott school district, which is also known as a Title I school district in New Jersey. It's, um, it's a very interesting school district where um, I have a cross section of America. So I have military students who speak three different languages. I have kids that are heavily involved in gang violence. And then I also have kids with chickens and that spans the entire uh, uh, spectrum of race as well. As an English educator, we are taught to beat AAVE, that's African American Vernacular English, out of our children. And I feel that that's classist. I feel that that's racist. But I also want them to know how to play the game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I want them to have the ability to express it, but I also don't want to cripple them in not giving them the sword and the shield with which they can defend themselves in this racist society. So I don't know if I should, like, I would like to explain it that way, but I don't know if that's appropriate. So I kind of just wanted to push it out to the think tank of how do you approach this when you desperately want to support children in their cultural differences and their ethnic differences and their family differences and also prepare them for unfortunately, where we are in society. First off, thank you for, for being here. Um, secondly, thank you for, for sharing, for asking, and for giving from your insight and your perspective. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking real questions. Uh, I think that's a part of how we make real change. Um, from my two cents, and it's just my two cents, I think Breaking it down as simply as you can is, a, is part of what helps it to be effective in trying to teach these lessons. Um, and, you know, as I like to say within our sessions here, it's about the weight of our words and the intention with our words. Um, there is nothing wrong, in my opinion, about teaching the lesson of there are different ways that we speak depending on what we're doing and who we're speaking to. And depending on how you choose to speak, you know, we're in a world where people will judge you. They judge things differently for different reasons in different ways. And I think um, depending on then when you get into, you know, what age group you're talking to really will then dictate how you go about it. When I'm talking with my younger kids, if I'm getting into this kind of lesson with first or third graders, first through third graders, um, I'll start by using either just random foreign language words that one kid might randomly know. It's like if I have a class, I have a student um, who she takes, uh, she, her, her parents lived in Germany, her mother's German, and she like, sings in a German choir. So she knows German. And I'll occasionally like throw out a German word and she'll know what I'm doing because she's pretty smart on it. Um, but I'll just like say a word. I won't have a, absolutely no context and just like later Hosen. And I'll repeat it a couple of times and then just ask the kids like, well, what do you think of that? And, you know, some kids might say something of like, that's funny. That's silly. There's always one kid that'll be like, that's dumb. That's not even a real word. And then I start to just pick up their brains. I'm like, all right, well, why did you think it was silly? Why do you think it was dumb? Why do you judge the word you don't understand? Um, and kind of take them through on like, here's, here's what we do as people. We react. We react to words. We react to language. And sometimes we don't even understand that we're doing it, but we do it. And the rest of the world's going to do that too. Um, and then, you know, it gets into whether it's saying that, like, are you speaking what we call proper English or are you speaking, you know, with, with a, articulation and enunciating, you know, that it's, it's bring it back almost to like parts of voice and speech and then like let it dilute into the examples of, of actual either like accents or regional changes in speech. Um, talking about like having sometimes made up words between friends or siblings and how, you know, that can have a different reaction in public versus privately. Um, but I think, I think really along the lines of the way that you spoke to us about it is along the lines of the way that you can approach it to teach the lesson that it's, it's getting your students to understand that 
We live in a world of judgment. It's something that we don't have a lot of control over, but it's something we can be mindful of. And depending on what we're doing, and you know, start with the easy things of whether it's like going to the principal's office or you know, speaking to your parent when you're trying to ask for something nice versus speaking to your parent when you think you're already in trouble, that we change the way we approach. And, and that impacts <laughs> the way the world reacts to us. Um, it can happen based off of race. It can happen based off of how you appear. It can happen based off of your location. Um, it can happen based off of how old people think you are or aren't. Um, and, and kind of letting it branch out from there. Um, but that's kind of my two cents on how, how I try to approach those lessons. Because lessons. I'm certainly in the belief that you can't shy away from it. It can't just be like, mm, we got to leave that for another time. Um, that's, I don't think that's helpful. I feel you on this really, really strongly. Um, I actually teach language arts, but I teach it to third graders. So I definitely agree with BJ in the sense, kind of starting it off with this very basic, very basic idea, because I mean, we're talking about eight and nine year olds. So they're, they're much smaller people. And and that idea of introducing a word or a phrase, you know, that they don't understand. Um, but I think where I then struggle, and and Amanda, I'm sure you'll you'll understand what I say when I say this. When I'm doing individualized reading assessments, okay, I'm supposed to. They're actually sitting. Swear to God, I did them today. They're sitting right here, okay, and I have to mark like, oh, when they get this word wrong. And I think that, that then goes back to that idea of education was made for the white person and then we're not accepting of anything else in any other way. But that's what stresses me out, I think, as an educator, when I know these things and I'm not allowed to give the student the credit for it. That infuriates me to the core. 